Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bikini in the Brain. As always, I'm joined with Ashley Kotwalzer. Hi. How are you doing, Ashley? You getting some sleeps? I wish I could say yes. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it was a rough night last night. Rough night. <laughs> Didn't sleep that well. My eyes are burning. Have you ever thought of maybe melatonin? <laughs> oh, what is this melatonin? I've never heard of such a substance. We, we were joking that every time she says she lacks sleep, that someone like messages. So they're kind to messages. Yeah. They're trying. But it's always like the most basic concepts. Maybe you should not drink caffeine or maybe like, you should try melatonin. We're like, like, really? Oh. oh. <laughs> I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to try what is, that sometime. What is this melatonin? <laughs> um, so we are going into some really cool stuff today, which is... Oh, it's a great idea. It's about the evolution of bikini mm -hmm. and not just physiques, but a lot of different things that you pointed out. Absolutely. Which is fun. This is going to be a good expert Ashley episode oh. on, a, on it because, well, sometimes they're like more science based and I'll probably be talking a little more. And then sometimes this one's more like experience based. So you'd be talking more. I think it's really great. This is oh. a good one. Yeah. So we'll be going through and this will be a little different. We're going to have some pictures and whatnot you guys can follow along with. Um, if you're listening on the podcast, um, you guess you can't see the picture. Sorry, but <laughs> we'll try to be as descriptive as possible. Absolutely. And then it'll be on YouTube if you're listening to the podcast. So, yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, Ashley, you've been um, competing here since in, at the Pro League since 2000 and Pro League 2013. Actually, 12. 12. You're, yes. Yeah, 12. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're looking back at all the history of the Olympia winners all the way to 2010. Yes. And we're going to go, and it's cool, you've been seeing this for quite a while. And actually, there's yeah. a couple of things that you did that I think kind of changed bikini, that at least trended to changing bikini, um, which I think is really cool. You know, I definitely saw it from 2013 to like 2016 was all green suits. Everyone wanted a oh. green suit. <laughs> and now it's all blue. Yeah. It's so oh, funny. Blue. Whoever the, whoever wins the Olympia, that's basically going to be the color trend for next year. So, uh, but with yours, it's funny with yours was because it was relatively, bikini was relatively new. I thought it just kind of, at a certain point, just thought that was just the best color <laughs> for bikini because I was like, well, green seems to be what everyone wears. Like we should just go green because everyone's been wearing it for three years, <laughs> four yeah. years here. So it's kind of funny how that, how that, uh, how everything trends to yeah. the winners and it does mold things. Although so. I will say I was expecting to see more pink bikinis so far this year and I haven't, I feel like still the most common color is blue or some variation of blue because I still think it's the safest color blue Yeah, because everyone looks good in blue. You'll, you won't have a judge that says that color doesn't look good on you. Yeah, That's why you see so many. So, yeah, I mean, uh, not as many greens these days. No, which is a good thing. Yeah. yeah it's a good thing. I like I like to be uh, a standout. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't that strange, though? The pinks, and we have a pink background today. Yeah. We're trying to, I'm, I'm matching Ashley's uh, shirt, co the closest color I could get today. We're, it's not It's not Monday. We missed a Monday podcast. Um, Ashley's working on her sleeps. So, <laughs> so I didn't uh, sleep in, though. I just no, had a sleep appointment. She had a sleep appointment, yeah. So, <laughs> You're making it sound like I true. slept in. That's I wish, so irresponsible. I, I would be so happy if you called me and you're like, hey, Adam, I'm going to be late to work today because I slept in. I'd be like, hallelujah. <laughs> 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 hallelujah. I don't even care if you like miss an appointment. I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> Get some sleep. Oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> so, um, no, but, but what was that? That was not totally off track. We're talking about going from... I don't even know where we're at. Oh, pink suits. That's what we're talking about. Pink, pink with the pink. Yeah, I've only seen like two pink suits at the shows. Yeah. Like, it's a harder color to pull off though. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen a lot of pink. So pink seems like it's still a safe color, even though I thought it was going to be just, I thought it unlocked the floodgates because yeah. everyone always wants to wear pink. Like that's a, that's a request I get a lot yes. as an athlete. Oh, I want to wear pink. I want to wear pink. They just don't know, you know? And then now when, when, when Maureen wins, you're like, you're just thinking, oh, Okay, it's open. It's it, obviously you can win in that, so I'm just gonna go for it. I just thought we'd see like so many. I, and what are you gonna say no to that now? It obviously works. So, so, so uh, anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this one, and go from here. So, where do you want to start, Ashley? I think we start at the beginning. Yeah. So I think um, this podcast is is gonna be a little unique, like like you said, um, and we're gonna go over like the history of it all. You know, uh, bikini has been around since actually 2009, and the first Bikini Olympia was 2010. So that was quite a bit ago, but a lot of evolution has taken place since then because I remember in the beginning, bikini was really like, they definitely didn't want like a figure look, but some like, you know, as 
it was an introduced. You did see some girls try to come from figure down to bikini just because it was like a new division. And you see like in the beginning, they still try to figure out what they want. But mostly I saw like a lot of, you know, fit girls, but they weren't what you see today. They were like maybe a girl that goes to the gym, works out a few times a week, kind of fit. And uh, now it's definitely evolved into you got to be you got to be an athlete right now. Yeah, you know, it's, sure. it's hardcore now. So, um, yeah, it wasn't quite as demanding back in the day. And, you know, just as any other division um, picks up, it's it's going to get more competitive. And you can say that about every single division, men's physique, uh, classic physique, you know, all that. So this is, you know, just the natural evolution of the sport. And as the talent pool gets deeper, it's, it comes more competitive, obviously. And you start to see that it's evolved, uh, quite drastically since 2009. Yeah. I remember starting, um, bikini preps back then too. You would have, I mean, it was very fitness model. It was very fitness model, but yes. almost less sometimes than like a fitness model too. You'd see someone with good curves and mm -hmm. you'd be like, you know, you ever thought about doing a competition? And it was like, oh, I don't know. I just kind of joined the gym, like that type of scenario, which I don't, I don't ever think it should go back that far. I don't, I don't think right. that's a good idea because it was too easy. Like it yes. was too entry level, right? It would, I mean, most of the people working out in shows back then were in bikini were like six monthers, like new, really new to the gym and just kind of like you know, the pretty girl in high school and, and wanted to do something else like that and just have fun with working out. And that was kind of it. Now it's, it's definitely more athlete based. Yes. Um, so yeah, so I think that, yeah, it's, it's definitely evolved and some will say it's evolved, you know, past the division or, or whatever. Um, and I think there's arguments for, for both sides. So, it, but I, I like that we can go into the start and see where it's at now. And also all the little things too, the suits, mm -hmm. the, the, the posing, all that stuff. So yeah. I think that's really fun. Totally. So, so our first Bikini Olympia winner, um, if you guys weren't aware, is Sonia Gonzalez. Now, from what I understand, she used to be a figure competitor, but she was a little small on the small side. But I thought she was so cute. And you know what's cool is, um, you know, maybe this is where you would want to do that. But um, what I think is cool is, like, the suits back in the day used to be so different. Um they used to be kind of wild, you know? They used to be um, kind of patterned and unique. They used to not have as many, like, stones, and you could have more fun with the connectors. They were kind of like a cross between a competition suit and a beach suit, you know? And as you can see, like, the jewelry was different. Posing, obviously, a lot different, but... You notice that um, the connectors back in the day, they were so low for a few years. I want to say they started to go over the hip probably. I mean, I've always worn mine over the hip because it looked better on me, but like it, no one wore the low connectors past like I want to say like 2014 or so. Yeah, and it's funny, the connectors themselves, those, like, round yeah. circles, what are those even called, like, like rings? Loop? Yeah, loop those rings, whatever, yeah. Those, I've never even seen those besides that year, right? I don't yeah. think I've ever seen them past that. And that was when people were still wearing, like, Target suits and, yeah, and whatnot. Too. I yeah, I did. <laughs> I do. I was. I remember my target. Suit. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we yeah. did. It was like, oh, just get it. Like, there was no specific cut. Like, yeah. it was just, oh, just get a target suit. And then, yeah, it's funny. You started seeing these like suits, and then there was a point where they were mixed, where it was like half custom suits and half whatever. But the backs were still so like in where I was when it started. When when bikinis uh, was starting, I was in Colorado, and they had a rule in, in Colorado where you had to have fifty percent glute coverage. I remember that? Yeah, yeah. and so. Um, girls would get, uh, I guess, like not able to compete if their suits were yeah. small. So you'd need two suits. You'd need a national level suit and you'd need a local level suit, mm -hmm. right? And then these national, these local level suits were like, I mean, some of them were more than 50% coverage. Like it was like a full on, like no one wears suits like that. But there was, there, so it, was, it made it a lot harder. And then eventually the girls were like, well, I, don't, I shouldn't have to buy two suits. These are the rules. And so it was funny. You're seeing all these variations of suit cuts, suit yeah. qualities, some with gems, some without gems, some target suits. It was all over the place. It was a Wild West, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the suit backs have gotten a lot smaller. And even the cut themselves, like they kind of were, they used to be kind of like more of a triangle back. Now it's just like a butterfly 
thong <laughs> in a way. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. Close. Yeah. So back in the day, that's kind of the thing. And, um, you know, you would just buy your suit. You could just buy your suit online. It wasn't a big deal. Some of it had some sparkle. Some girls wore no sparkle. It was kind of like they're, again, trying to figure out what the division's all about. But it's kind of cool to see, you know? Yeah. And you know what? <clears throat> she had for considering the local level wasn't as muscular as her. She actually had a good amount of muscle. Yeah. I really liked her her look. I think that was a good fitness model look. Yeah. She's very bubbly. Kind of she was super cute too, you yeah. know? Like her hairstyling and I just yeah. liked I liked her her overall package that she brought. Yeah. So But I remember um kind of whenever she was competing, it was kind of like a oh, this is kind of like too close to figure now. Yeah. So then you'll start to see once they're figuring it out in the, in the next year, the winner, uh, if you want to pull her up, Nicole Negrani. That's when they're like, okay, well, we need something more. Uh, bi- this would be more bikini now. We need something a bit smaller, something that's clearly different from a figure competitor. So, you know, in her era, you know, that's when you start to see, okay, now the suits are looking more like the suits of today. Yeah. We've got like a solid color suit. There's no pattern or design. Um, and we got a little bit of sparkle. Now these suits weren't fully sparkled. They weren't fully sparkled at all. They were just like every once in a, and an in she would see like a, a rhinestone. <laughs> I remember even like they were kind of like against a fully rhinestone suit because they said it was uh, too distracting or whatever. But, um, yeah, you know, um, this this structure, very, very small structure, petite girl. I like that. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased. Um, <laughs> but, you know, again, you see that that very low connector trend, too. Yeah. Like a long, to- it like lengthened your torso. Quite a it bit. was like, that. it's the opposite of now. It's crazy. Yeah, if you were to, it's probably like <clears throat> three inches shorter than like on the hips than where it would typically sit. Like yeah, these suits look like they were about to fall off. <laughs> yeah, like it's like almost custom straight across the legs here. That's, yeah. that's pretty That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, no, uh, this was when, this year was the year where you're starting to see mixed suits or maybe it was the next year, like on stage at like the NPC shows. Yeah, the hair was different. Everything, it was so funny because the packages were so different at the local levels, like at the mm-hmm. NPC levels. You would see professional Olympia look, hair sparkles, everything. Then you'd see like a girl with maybe didn't nail her tan, hair and clips, target suit. And you're like, this is the same, <laughs> the same category. Like, yeah. What's going on here? So it was fun. Those were fun days though. Cause everyone was trying to kind of figure it out still. Yeah, she, definitely. And it was a lot more defined. It, is she too muscular? It was like, oh my gosh, there's a bicep vein. That's too much. It's too much muscle. Yeah, Pull her back. <laughs> that was, that was the thing. Yeah, for sure. And if you want to go back and, and show the other, um, the front pose that they, they used to do. There, no, um, maybe I'm the one that should be doing this. Yes. <laughs> um, so the, the front poses used to be quite different. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys are aware of the um, hand on hip, uh, facing straight forward type pose. Um, that that used to be the, the standard bikini pose, you know. Uh, as we can see, like she's basically front on her foot is just kind of pointed out a little bit, um, hand on the hip, very relaxed. We don't really see that that much these days. I think every once in a while I'll see like this pose, like within a routine, routine. but I don't really see this on the lineup. They're usually more uniform these days when it comes to the front pose. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'll, I'll rarely see it. And a lot of times when I see it, on a, a professional, I'll usually tell them if it's not helping you look better, if it's a, if it's a second pose, like if it's your worst pose out of those two, then don't even do it. Just mm-hmm. drop it. Cause why are you going to show them a worse pose? So it's, it's really rare. You see it these days. I mean, I almost never see it anymore. Right. Right? Was, it th- gets less by the year. Yeah. I think I was going to say like a couple years ago, I was seeing it a lot still in the routines and yeah. now it's like pretty rare. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. rare. So I think a lot of people are catching on just show your best. Be, but also I think this year what's trending, which, you know, we'll get into as we go farther is the shorter posing routine thing is starting yes. to really trend. Which, Thank God. Yeah. I mean, it was getting crazy. I was yeah. always a fan of the shorter routine. Yeah. Now I don't feel like the odd one out. Cause I always had the shortest routine. That's always what they wanted. <laughs> and I didn't do the walk back or walk forward. I'm just like, I'm giving you the basics. Yeah. Only and, my best. And that's what that's what they've always they've been saying it for years, but no one was listening I until know. they started doing like times. But I can't I can't even remember how many times I've been in a a, a pre show check in 
where Sandy was like, girls, you don't need to take a minute and a half for your posing routine. The longer you're on stage, the more flaws I'm going to see, you know? And she kind of explains it every time and no one listens. And they're like, yeah. here's a 90 second posing routine for someone who only needs to show a front and back pose. And that's really all they want to see, I you know? know? And so, and it's funny because when you talk to the judges actually, and these girls are doing those real twisty walks and twisty this oh, and all yeah. that. The judges are like, why are you doing that? We don't need to see it. But then it trends and no one knows that the judges are saying that. So they're saying they want shorter routines. They don't want all these twisty walks. They want in and out, do your front back, get out of there, you know? Yeah, it's funny how like somebody will start a trend of posing and then they do well and then people mimic that. And at some point, somebody started to walk to the back. And then everyone started doing it. And I can't tell you how many shows I've done and won <laughs> and I didn't walk to the back and I didn't walk forward. You know, it's like somebody started it. And if you ask the judges, we'll be like, you know, somebody started it and then everyone started doing it. Yep. But that's not necessarily what we're looking for. We'll walk you in the comparisons. You don't need to do it in your individuals. And, you know, these girls with the really long posing routines, I get it. You want to shine on stage and you worked hard for that moment. But like you're hitting the same pose like five times. It's like, okay, got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll cut a lot of pros walking in their yeah. routine. And it's, and I'm sorry, pros, if you're listening to this and you're one of my pros and I, I told you, this, like, sorry, but they're, it's never, it's always, they're always kind of like, really, I got to cut it. Like, cause they want to do it, you know? Yeah. And I get it cause they've worked so hard, but I mean, I, I've probably had, I've probably cut it a, quite a few times. Cause I'm like, if it's not helping you, it might be taking away. Let's just, let's just get rid of it. You know, mm -hmm. you don't need it. And, um, you know, cause the whole point of the routine is show that's your one chance. You really get to show your best only cause there's no rules to it. Right. They're not turning you front and back, front and back. They're not like analyzing like that. It's your control show only your best and get out of there. You know, yeah. <laughs> make it a quick, just get, get out of there. Yeah, definitely. Cause <laughs> yeah. like, even if your poses are great and you look fantastic, you know, keep in mind, these judges have to judge, you know, maybe 30, 30 bikini girls that day if it's a big show. And it does become like, okay, you know, you lose the shine the yeah. longer you're up there. You know, you don't necessarily get brighter the longer you stay on stage. You kind of dim out. So they're just like, all right. That's you know, a good so, way of saying it. You know, yeah. so just keep that in mind. Don't don't feel tempted to add on all these extra movements and walks just because your favorite athlete did because – it doesn't necessarily mean that's why they won previously. And it's funny, you know, going back to like these trends that people are doing with the posing and, you know, sometimes the judges don't want it. And it, it's like you have to find out from going to a seminar sometimes that that's not what they want. Because I think like last year it became oh horrible. I hate when people do this. The whole touching yourself oh, yeah. during posing, like they would kind of swipe underneath their butt or so, caress their waistline. And so weird. too. It was it's really Oh, I hate it. It's very cringy. It's so cringe. <laughs> and I, you know, I've been to several different, you know, seminars and Sandy will tell you like, that's, don't do that. That's not, not what we want to see here. You know, it's, he, she even made a, a joke saying like, if you have to feel where your glute tie-ins are, <laughs> that's probably not, not that showing that you're being very confident about it. Cause you'll see girls do the swipe under their butt. And honestly, I saw a girl last week yeah. <laughs> at the, at the UK show, she was doing that. And I was like, no, yeah. but maybe she didn't get the memo. She's from Europe. So like, I don't know, yeah, but it it's, it's carry over there. It takes longer to carry. Yeah. Away, right? So you just got to be up on the trends and, and listen to the judges, not just listen to or watch your favorite athlete. Cause you know, we even do when we do posing videos too, we always give the disclaimer like this might not be applicable a year from now. Yeah. Posing is always changing. So you got to stay current. You got to stay up on it. You got to watch shows. You got to go to seminars, see what the judges are saying, you know, because they are there to give you valuable information and you got to stay current with it. Like literally if, if we weren't watching shows for like six months, posing would be different. Yeah. It's almost you know? scary. Cause you could just catch you one day, you know? Yep. Yep. Even yeah. like two years ago too, it was like, I call it the scarecrow arms yeah. in the back pose. No one does scarecrow arms anymore. You gotta be, you gotta be up and on it or the lat flare in the front pose. Yeah. No one's doing that. So it's like, if you're watching YouTube videos for practice from like two years ago, you better find a more current one, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's surprising, but the good thing is there are a lot of seminars now 
And I'm going to give a shout out to Sandy Williamson yeah. for just staying super active with those seminars. Absolutely. What is she doing them four times a year out here or something? Oh, I don't know. Her and Patrick Sampson. So shout out to local promoter, NPC promoter, Patrick Sampson and uh, Chris Mines, right, is also doing them too, right, in um, Nevada. So yeah, so shout out to those Center Podium too. They're they're doing these seminars. And Adam Bonilla. Yeah. Once a month. <laughs> Once a month Team we do Elite ours physique. with Ashley. You know what, I Ashley, I, I really appreciate you doing that because you don't, you know, it's not mandatory that you come to those, but she comes to every posing seminar. We do them once a month and all the coaches come and I always want the coaches here because I want them to learn what we've learned, right? And so it's really fun for the coaches too because for me, I use it as like a training vehicle for the coaches as right. well. Like, hey, this is what I want your check-ins to look like when an athlete will check in with their posing. Like, make sure that you know this, like the back of your hand. And you need to be here for these posing seminars so you know what what I'm learning. I'm not just like making you come. I want you to be learning, you know? So it's like one of those things. And, you know, you see a lot of people who are really like studious and like, what's new? What's new? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's funny is that, you know, I go to as many shows as I can. I watch every single show. I analyze every show. I do a video. These videos that I do, these recap videos, I really like because they keep me sharp. You know, they keep right. me sharp at what's going on. I can see it so visually now. You know, you caught me at the last one. You were like, and I was like, oh, that girl this, right, in the back row. And then I went to the front. And then Sandy was like, oh, that girl this. And I was like, oh, sweet, I got it. Remember at the last show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, like, I was like, okay, good. That's I'm really glad because I caught that and – that was practice, you know, it's like yeah. proof of practice, right? So it's just one of those things that um, I'm always just like afraid because of that one. You know why I'm afraid too is because it happened to me in Vancouver once, mm-hmm. um, 2018, Vancouver Pro Show that you were at. Um, it wasn't with your division, it was with Men's Physique, but I went to, maybe it was, I think it was, but all of a sudden, every guy on stage was doing the men's physique was doing the front pose like this, yeah. the hand on hip front pose, double hand on hip. Cause Andre started doing it. And then it's funny. Cause Sandy was like, you don't need to do that. Only Andre can really pull that off and still have his lats out. All you other guys, like a lot of you other guys are shrinking up, but everyone again thinks they need to do it because Andre was winning doing the double hand on hip. But you know, he's just able to do that. He's, you know, he's, he's a beautifully, a beautiful aesthetic physique. And, um, but I was like, Oh damn, when did I miss that? everything shifted to this. I knew that some guys were doing it, but every guy was doing it there. I'm like, okay, I guess we got to do that now. And I had a men's physique guy that was competing in a couple of weeks. I'm like, hey, bro, we got to change your, your change your posing. Cause, and I thought the same thing. Everyone's doing it, so we have to do that. You know. So right. um, then a seminar, and Sandy's like, well, you don't need to do that. So it's like, you got to be aware of what's coming at you, and you got to be paying attention to these shows. And so a lot of times with posing coaches, you have to make sure they're very um, studious, right? And they are still staying active. Because you have some retired posing coaches who, you know, they kind of don't follow it anymore. They're just teaching posing. And you don't know as a student, as a first time competitor, if they're current or not. Um, so I would say just make sure they're staying current, you know, when you're, when you're finding your posing coach, active competitors is great. Um, coming to seminars, we do them once a month. I, I don't, I'll, I'll post, when is our even in our next one? You know, I got to post it. It's in my, it's in my uh, email list. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get to it by the end of this, <laughs> but um, we do them once a month. If you're on the email list, we can, uh, you'll get that email, but we do them once a month. They're free followed by a booty seminar um, with Courtney and Sam. Booty so, camp. Booty camp. Yeah. Yes. I don't know what to call it. We call it glute camp because it's glutes camp. and legs. It's a glute and leg day. Just call it glute camp. Glute that, camp. Sounds, yeah. that sounds catchy though. Glute camp. Okay. There it is. Glute camp. So. <laughs> Good stuff. Good yeah. Stuff. So yeah. So those are great and you got to keep doing them. And again, don't watch some old three-year video because it'll be dated really quickly and yeah, yeah you know something i was like thinking a good video idea sometime would be like reacting to my old posing routines because they <laughs> are so cringe i look back at my old posing and i'm like oh my gosh that's so cringe it like <laughs> hurts to watch it hurts to watch why do you think that i thought it was i thought it was, it's it's definitely <laughs> dated but it's not like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just looks so unnatural, I guess. You're, it's a lot more like, uh, sp- it's like spunky fun. It's different it's than like, like corny. Yeah. It's like spunky fun, but now it's slower and more like, yeah, you know, it's like still more sp- controlled and it's still yeah. you and more tamed down. Yeah. But that one's like, yeah, it's like spunky fun. <laughs> oh my God. So cringe. <laughs> That's I, I, whenever it pops up into like a feed or something, if it gets reposted from a long time ago, I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't pose like that anymore, guys. I promise. Yeah. It's, it's hard to <laughs> decipher because it's still a green suit. So people probably think it was like last oh, year. <laughs> yeah. Goodness gracious. <laughs> true, true. So next up. Oh, Natalia Mello. Yeah. So 2012, we Natalia Mello. There's a lot of them. Where are we at? 
So, oh, yeah, I love I Yeah, love her. you know something? I was looking at her physique, and I actually think this physique could actually hang these days. I, I was going to say the same but thing. But she would need to be more conditioned. Like, yeah. we, she wouldn't be able to get away with not having, like, a full crispy tie-in. You know what I mean? Um, but I think muscle density-wise, this is a physique that could probably still hang. Maybe a little more on the upper body, too. Yeah. But... Little more on the shoulders, a little more conditioning in the glutes, but the glutes are really muscle. Oh yeah, you can tell it's bubbly. there, yeah. the roundness. And look at the suits, like I was telling you, the the triangle back. Yeah. See that? Um in in the real oh, remember the the Dang, triple yeah. dangle? Yeah, triple the dangle. dangles. The dangle connectors were a thing. I've never worn them, but yeah. Man, suits back in the day just look like they were like so close to falling off. I remember ever been having to to glue that part right there just so it doesn't. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like this this physique could hang these days. This this one right here with just a little little work. But um, you know, you definitely as as we'll go into the next ones with my physique couldn't hang. My my Olympia win physique could not hang these days for what's being rewarded. But yeah, I remember this one. This was like uh, everyone liked this look a lot, um, but if there was a critique that I kind of heard behind the scenes was too much for bikini. Whoa, too much for bikini, which is interesting because you'll see they kind of corrected the following year Yeah, with me. Cause I was so small. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like this, she was just ahead of her time, I guess you could say. Yeah. This would have been a perfect, like 2000, I would probably put her at like a 2018 physique. Seven, 17, 17 18, 18, yeah. yeah. 2018. Yeah. So, and then now she would just need a little bit more muscle, but up uh, top only not, not even the legs up top and then more conditioning in the legs. Yep. Yeah. But glutes. great waistline too, you know, I but you, know, you probably would do something different with the hair too. The hair color is a little bit close to her tan color. So probably darken it up a tiny bit. And then that would be, yeah, that'd be, well, it could be the lighting though too, but yeah, loved her physique. Super yeah. bubbly. That was one of the like more just round bubbly physiques, you know, yeah, and it definitely. had that, um, that pretty muscle that we talk about, you know, that pretty round muscle that's not dense. So, yep. okay. Definitely. Now on to someone we all know. This is 2013. Okay. I, oh, this is where I think they corrected the, well, not, I don't want to say corrected as if there was something wrong with it, but they th maybe thought, okay, that was too muscular. We got to reel it in a bit. Um, this was <laughs> my 2013 bikini Olympia win. Wow. I was small, <laughs> really small. Yeah. Holy crap. Was I small? Jeez. Yeah, you're, you're you're a little you're softer than now and smaller than now yeah yeah and um oh my gosh did i forget to take off my hair tie <laughs> oh my god i did <laughs> i think i have two hair ties oh you guys god. who are just listening i had two hair ties on my my forearm apparently i forgot to take this off <laughs> I did not know that. Did you know uh, that? I mean, you know not that? till now. That's I mean, funny. I, I'm sure in in 2013 I realized it after I saw, but I'm I've forgotten. That's funny. Yeah. So wow. That ring too. That was uh that was uh something. Is that a long ring? Yeah, long? I had two rings. Wow, I really overdid the jewelry. Here. <laughs> I did my own makeup clearly. Uh, hair. Hair was really fine. flat. It was fine though. It was really bad. flat hair. Um, but as you can see, <laughs> it was more about structure at, during this year than, uh, muscularity or conditioning clearly. And, um, you know, I'm very self-aware and I will tell you this physique in 2013 that I won the Olympia with, I don't even know if that, that for sure wouldn't get a pro card. I'll be honest. Yeah. You're right. I, maybe if you, when we go into my 2014 and 15 looks, I think maybe those are more, maybe if I'm lucky, I could w sneak in there. I think muscular, muscularity wise you could in shape and it would just be your conditioning. But back then you didn't need to be that tight. Yes. Yeah, so. so, you know, I feel like in 2013 competing here at the Olympia, if I look like I did today, they would be like, Oh girl, you need a good figure. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. So it's, I'm just kind of aligning myself with what they wanted in that time, but I am very self-aware. That's not that impressive to me anymore. You know, um, this was, I don't know if you guys know the story of it, but you know, my first Olympia, I won the Olympia, my first time competing in it. And, um, I went in just as, as a, a fresh pro and I just was happy to be there 
You know, I genuinely like was surprised I made it to Olympia. My goal when I turned pro was to win one pro show so that I could compete at Olympia one day. And I thought that would be the pinnacle of my career, you know, <laughs> one pro show, <laughs> 37 later. Um, but I was just very grateful to be there and to be amongst like the girls that I looked up to and I saw in magazine covers and stuff. And I thought, wow, I can't believe I'm here. And um, definitely wasn't expecting to win. Definitely not. And, you know, part of me was like, wow, you know, there's, I think like this Bikini Olympia, there was like 23 girls or something like that. And I was like, well, if I get top 10, that's asking for too much, honestly. But if I did, <laughs> wow, that'd be, whew. but it was funny. Cause like I had the mindset coming in of just happy to be there literally. And, um, I've said this story a few times, but I'll re-say it for those new listeners here. I, you know, when they do call outs, they're like, you know, the first calls, uh, the the best ones, the ones that are going to place and then second and third or whatever. And I got first call out and there was me and two other girls and I was convinced like they were doing it in reverse or something like, oh, they're trying something new this year. There's no way I got first call out. Like they're, they're testing us. They're trying something new. Okay. Um, and even all the way up until finals, I just thought, okay, well, whatever. They're trying something new. I think, you know, everyone was telling me congrats on first call, but I'm like, I don't know guys. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, be so sure just quite yet. You know, I, it just seems a little too, too good to be true. And, um, I didn't realize that that was the actual first call out until they were, you know, placing us. And, you know, they call us in reverse, like sixth place, fifth place. And then I was like, okay, this goes real in second call out that got like fifth place and fourth place. But it really hit me when they called third place because I'm like, that girl was in my call out. Like what? Hold on. No way. So they were calling third place and I'm like, oh my God. Then I started to get nervous because, you know, they're calling second and then the winner or whatever. And then, you know, they called my name as the winner and I was like, no way. And I just like started crying because I was like, I was such an underdog and no one expected me to win. I did not expect to win. I didn't even expect a place, you know, and I was such an unknown competitor. I didn't really have sponsors or anything, just a girl from Akron, Ohio. Yeah. And it was just, I did it. I was such an underdog. It's so cool. Crazy. I always say, you know, it's good to meet your goal, but to exceed it is so much more rewarding. So that's why you always got to keep your expectations in check because if you exceed your expectations, it's like extra cool. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that things are so different now, not just in, not just in, you know, physiques and all that too, but also in awareness of who competitors are you know now you have people like me doing videos on shows and you kind of can keep up with who's who and and who's winning and whatnot but back then it was like we would still get magazines from npc news yeah. like six months later and you're like oh this girl ashley Kautwalser <laughs> when uh won a show that's cool i wonder if she'll you know you just didn't there wasn't like i just got on instagram in like 2012 like you just there wasn't the information flow like Oh, she might be in a magazine as like a sponsored athlete, but it was just bodybuilding.com like, forums too, though. Yeah. Or was it bodybuilding? Yeah, bodybuilding.com forums. had the forums. You had to yeah. really be like, you had to really search for it. You had yeah, to really look. even even on NBC News Online, they didn't cover all the shows like they do now. Like that's why if you go on to NBC News Online, it won't have all of my 37 wins. Yeah. Like there was nobody from NPC News coming to India or Russia when I went, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, that's why we got to make a video sometime just like as documented proof of all my <laughs> wins because there is no list of it. You know yeah. what I mean? We got to do that one day. No, for sure. We got to do that. You know, because yeah, you won't see them on there, but that's how it was back in the day. Yeah. And Not so you, were, you weren't just a underdog but you were almost you were a little unknown because there just wasn't much I was media definitely unknown yeah. and I didn't have sponsors and I wasn't you know I wasn't part of a big team there was so many there was so many athletes that went to these bigger teams and I was just a girl from Ohio small team you know no one knew who I was I wasn't expecting when no one else was and you know even looking back I, I keep saying like with every 
winner, there's like controversy and pushback. And we still see that to this day. Yeah. Anybody who wins that's new, that's a new one, there's always talk and chatter like, why did she win? I don't get it, you know, yeah. with everyone. So expect if there is a new winner this year in the Olympia, you're still going to hear that chatter because every new competitor that wins will get it. It's part of the process. Yeah. I remember when you won – um I was on like Facebook when I was when I was watching it, and I was like, "Yeah, it looks like it's a correction year. I think it was good because it was getting too muscular. Yeah, a lot of the girls, Natalia, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, a lot of girls just can't look like that. And that's what this is supposed to be, you know. And everyone's like, "You think it's a correction?" Like people were like, "Why?" I'm like, "She's she's muscular too." And I was like, "Yeah, but not that muscular." Is like, is it's funny so it's like, anybody thought I was muscular here? <laughs> oh yeah, people were in the comments, you know, because back then oh. on Facebook, people would like I was. I was active like I am now, but it was like on Facebook. People yeah. would go to my Facebook for it than it was other things. But I remember that. And and people were like mad that I was saying it was a correction year. And I'm like, no, they're they're honing the vision down like to what it's supposed to be defined as. Yes. It went a little too far. Like it was like a whole thing when it's like we're going through that again, you know, where we're like, oh, it's getting a little muscular, you know. So it's uh, it's funny how you're right. It's just there's always going to be that that kind of controversy of no yes, matter who wins. Yes, no matter who wins. Bikini is just a hard division like that. You're never going to get, oh, he's too muscular in bodybuilding. Yes. You're just going to get, oh, he's a, he's a freak, but it's not, it's yeah. bodybuilding. You know, it's, it's almost like you can't be too good in a sense. Like you can't be too muscular. You can't be too lean. It's, it's definitely tricky balanced and that's why you got to stay current with it. Yeah. It's art, man. Bikini's art. Definitely. Definitely. It's, it's art for Girls who don't know they need to be tough yet, though. That's a, it's a, like you don't, you don't get into it knowing you need to be tough and have thick skin because it beats you up. Like it's, you're gonna have to be able to swing with the, the, the swings that come with it, you know, cause you're gonna get one day the same look, you could be first place and the same look, you could be 16th place, and you're gonna have really thick skin. Yes. You say skin like a rhino, ducks like a feather, right? Exactly. And I <laughs> always say this to you guys is like, ev with every Olympia champion they have lost. Many Olympia champions have gotten 16th at one point. You know what I mean? But it's the ones that keep with it, who are resilient and push through is the ones who thrive. Not everyone has a smooth, well, actually no one has a smooth journey to the top. There's always going to be bumps. There's going to be shows where you're like, I don't get what happened. There's going to be shows where you didn't peak correctly. Um, yeah. So it's always, it's always going to be rough. And thick skin with not only your physique, but also, you know, your your mindset. Because girls are going to beat you at some point. It's it's part of the game. Um, so, yeah, in 2013, I won by only one point. And now moving on to 2014, as you can see, I put on a little more muscle. Yeah, you were lifting. Whoa, I got a little quad there. I got a little arm and holy abs abs have never really been a problem for me but i did, people definitely noticed that i put on some more muscle here so that was kind of cool to see so in 2014 i won with a perfect score so it was like i kind of increased that lead a bit um and i did make some improvements as you can see slowly but surely and even we still have those window connectors man with the window connectors i felt like i hung on to those window connectors as long as, you could. As, long as i could i think till like what 2018 19, or 19? yeah 19 you started the 19 yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my god i kept the window connectors till 2019 <laughs> i was like i refused to give them up and i eventually did in 2020 but that's the whole thing so these window connectors they were my thing. I always wore my suit above my hips, though. I always did that. And as you can see in my posing, I'm doing that front pose. It's like I'm a little more angled than than just the front on, um, but I'm still doing that one hand on hip, weight to your side kind of thing. The posing, I was very standing up straight. And gosh, the tie-ins, where are they? They're, I mean, you can see they're, they're trying to come through, trying to, but... Um, a lot of body fat going on there. <laughs> but I feel like um, with this win, I didn't get as much controversy or pushback because it wasn't a shock. People were delight delighted by the improvements I made. For all those people that said I wasn't muscular enough in 2013, I rose to the occasion, I feel like, and I made some improvements. Yeah, you did. That was a good year you know? of gains. Good year of gains for you. Yeah, because I actually had like... In 2013, you know, I'll be honest, because the requirements weren't as intense, it was such a smooth transition from college track to bikini. I barely had to do anything. Yeah. I could, even in 2011, which was technically my first show, 
I barely had to do anything. It wasn't my physique that held me back in 2011. It was everything else. The fact that I couldn't pose. I, I had like a spa spray tan, like bad hair, but muscle was there. So it was kind of like what bikini was intended. I just, I was an athlete. I didn't yeah. have to do much. Um, but here I definitely spent some time in the gym, lifted heavy and it kind of shows. Hey, yeah. that's cool. You got some, that was, a, that was a pretty big year of improvement. You can see there's a lot of like newbie, newbie, newbie games, games, right? Like where you really went after it type yeah. of thing. Went from being a college track athlete to now I'm a serious lifter. So in 2015, let's try to find me here in 2015. Um, 2015, I feel like I put on even even more muscle. Okay, now we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Whoa, I put on some muscle there. Yes, I did. And now, do you see this pose here? It's kind of actually similar yeah. to what we're doing now. And I remember I was, I don't want to say I was the first one to do this, but one of the first and it was kind of like a weird pose. A lot of people thought, like, "What? The, what the heck? This is weird." Um, but yeah, I put on I put on some good good muscle there too in 2015, and I won again with another perfect score. So this, I feel like, I don't I don't even know if this would get a pro card. Honestly, is this 2013 or this is 2015, right? Oh, I'll, I'll figure it out. But um, yeah, I. I have leg muscles at least. Yeah. <laughs> the upper body still needed help though, but maybe maybe from abs down to lower body it could get a pro card maybe. Maybe if I was posing in the posing in the standard pose. It's a good amount yeah. of muscle. I think it could. I definitely think it could. I don't know if the the condition you just have to get tighter of course, but that's you could probably still do it. You could probably still do it. Maybe. Right, the, right the arms yeah. though. It's back in the day they said nothing about my arms. It wasn't, it wasn't a flaw back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I remember start, when I started hearing those comments about shoulders and arms, it was like, oh yeah. Okay. I want to like, say it was more like 2021 is when I started hearing the upper body. Yeah. Becoming a real thing. When I yeah. heard lats, I was like, almost fell out of my seat. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, lats, what are you even talking? What are we doing here? You know, it was, yeah. it was like lats. Um, yeah. I remember that when they started saying, oh, you need more lat. I was like 2000. Yeah. That was closer to. 19 i think when they started talking about lats or yeah eight maybe it was it was it was definitely the isa effect it was the the lat the lat thing yeah so, everyone had had to have lots after that so yeah. starting trends everyone everyone's starting some trends um the next oh, up was courtney oh. yes courtney was next courtney king so here she is courtney was very petite yes yeah, she was very small waistline she was was a standout for her waistline for sure but, um, yeah, I want to say, like, you know, maybe similar to the amount of muscle I had, perhaps. She got, she got some shoulder caps, though. Shoulders, yeah, her structure is really good. Clavicle width, tiny waistline, good muscle bellies, you know, um, got the fitness model look. Yeah, you know. definitely. Yeah, she's a, and it's, you know, you have different types of athletes, and some are going to be, like, structural, like, structural muscle versus actual packed on muscle. You know, you see that. With some girls, it just their structure is just everything. You know, it's just like, man, great structure. You don't even need as much muscle because your structure kind of does it for you. Right. And she was kind of one of those, one of those people, just that clavicle width, that tiny waistline, um, and then just round, pretty muscle. She was super young when she won that too, wasn't she? Like, yeah, I she think was, she was the youngest winner. I think she was like nineteen or something crazy. I'm not like that. sure. Twenty, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, she, she looked good. I actually really like this look. Maybe yeah. I'm biased, but it looks really good to me. It feels like she, you can definitely tell she trains hard. She works out. She's not over the top. Um, you know, by today's standards, they would definitely tell her to put on some more muscle though, you know? Um, and then you can see too, with the connectors, people are wearing them above the hip now yeah. <laughs> and the suits are looking much more stoned out. And, um, I think we're really starting to pay attention to those little details even more so than ever. The hair, the makeup, making sure the tan's on point, all that. So coming along together quite nicely. And then in 2018, or, Oops. oh, did we, we say 2017? Well, that was 2016. 16, so yeah. got, Angelica was next. Yes, yeah. Angelica was 2017. Sorry to um, confuse you guys there. So Angelica, 2017 and 2018. So I'm not sure which one is which, but I will say she kind of brought us 
similar package with each. Um, again, I think this physique could hang these days. Oh yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah, you could see there's a, there is a difference in shoulder development, I think. Yes. It's, what a, that was a big jump, I would say. Yeah. You could see the, when you look back, if you guys should, should zoom in on that and look at the shoulders, they, was, they would be legs, no problem. Legs conditioning is, is pretty close too. Um, but the shoulders are significantly bigger now. Than, than they were in 2018. Mm -hmm. There's something I want you to pay attention to now too. There is starting to be a trend of this blue slash purplish oh, yeah. suit. And just you watch in the next few years. Wow. It, <laughs> it's really becoming common and it sticks <laughs> to this day. But um, yeah, I do think like she could actually hang these days for yeah. sure. I don't think there would be much needed to, to be competitive. You know, I, I don't see... I don't see anything that would be a hindrance at this point, honestly. Yeah. Just she would, she'd still be, still be in the mix. See, I think now they're starting to find the, the consistency standard, right? So, you know, the, the division can only get so big and so muscular until they're like, okay, we need to kind of keep it here. And I think this is the point in 2017 where it's like, okay, we found it. We found the look. And I think from here on out, you'll see, more similarities than big jumps and going up and down as we saw previous, you know, I think like in the previous years we saw up and down, up and down, yeah. up and down. And now it's like, okay, now it's more consistent. Of course you'll see little changes, but nothing like, Oh my God, this is so different. You know, they're starting to find their footing with like the um, trends of the division. Yeah. I, and everyone's posing like this now. Yeah. That's pretty much when it's what it started and everyone's, yeah, everyone's doing it now. There's, mm -hmm. I don't see anyone posing with, in that front pose, the other, the old, the old drop back pose. Like I don't yeah. see anyone doing that anymore. Nope. Yeah. Maybe just in their posing routine for yeah. a second, but nothing that's, um, in, in the comparisons. And Angelica won two years in a row. Yep. She's the only other multi-year winner in bikini. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, Ashley holds the record. Ashley, Three. that's pretty cool. That's pretty Ooh. cool. <laughs> Ashley's modest. I think that's a pretty amazing feat. Um, so this is the 2018, it looks like. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was 2018. Sorry. The 2017 will be similar though. Good yeah. catch. Is this 2000? This has to be 2017, right? Is that the it's year? different background. Or is that the year assume. Janet won? I don't know. Oh, you're right. Maybe that's it. Um, but, uh, regardless. Yeah. I think she definitely, you can see her shoulders here. Look at her shoulders here. Yeah. They're, they're like, you can see the the jump in shoulders. That's it became, I mean, it's pretty obvious. We should like pull up, if you pull up those, I should pull those up next to each other one day. Um, and yeah, the shoulder, she definitely worked on her shoulders from that yeah. year to that year. There's a big jump. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's cool to see some of the superstars in, in here and how they've improved as well. She yeah. Look how much she's improved her shoulders. Yeah. Jen has really improved her shoulders significantly too. Wow. Right. Good job. Yeah. You can see him. <laughs> Yeah, you can see yeah, Janet too. Um, that's funny. So uh, that this might have been the year I didn't compete. This is the year I didn't compete. 2017, is it? Well, I don't know which one is which, but I did not compete in 2017. <laughs> Maybe that's 18. Um, but yeah, so I didn't compete in 2017, guys. Uh, 2016, I was really soft too. I was overly soft. Um, but uh, moving forward uh, yes. in 2018, the Isa effect. Yes. Oh my gosh. She started a wave of trends, didn't she? She really did. Man. Now she this was like the, I feel like maybe in, in this year, it was the wow factor that really brought it home. So Issa has that wow factor. What do we mean by the wow factor, Adam? Well, she has, well, the wow factor to me, and I think it's defined everyone probably a little different is when you come out, it's just Something that's different about this competitor that makes you just, you don't know why. And you're just like, you well, I know why here. Yeah. They, you're just like, what, why is she so like, it's just, whoa. Like you see her yeah. and just like crazy for her. It's her waistline. And her oh shoulder yeah. Away, that's right? the wow factor. Right it's there. like when I remember, like I've seen her a couple of times where I'm like caught off guard by it where how small her waist is. There was once she was wearing, she was wearing a waist trainer once too, which of yeah. course makes it enhances it a little bit when we did a posing seminar once. Um, and, and she walked in and I was like, dude, where's her, where's her waist? Like this yeah. is cr pure crazy town. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, structurally, um, clavicle with tiny waistline. And then she was the one that started this kind of lat flare, right? Yeah. And from what I want to understand too, she's not really flaring her lats. Just yeah. is how she's built. <laughs> yeah. So I think she, I think she cheats it a little bit and does open up a tiny bit 
um, to, to show it, to show the V taper, but I don't think it's a bad thing yeah. because the thing is when you're doing a, any lat flare or showing your V taper from the front, the, if the judges don't know that you're doing it and they're giving feedback, like, Oh, that's just how she's built, which is what they're, they're always saying about her. Um, you're doing it right. You know, right. if, if you can't decipher that's your natural look and you're just opening up a tiny bit to create some more V taper, because if you lose that V taper, she loses a lot of upper body width, you know? Yeah. And it could just be that she's putting her shoulders back too. Yeah. And they naturally just, her lat just kind of comes out like that. But because she has that, everyone started opening up their lat in that front pose yeah. for a couple of years, you know? Yeah. They were even kind of like cheating it with like their elbow up a little bit, almost like a, this. yep. Yeah. Yep. And also I saw some that were like a, halfway figure halfway bikini pose like trying to really get that lat nice and big so she definitely started a trend there and uh yeah i think everyone was super impressed by this look um you know and some people would say oh well why you know she that's such an unattainable look you know again with everyone will get criticism when they win i liked this i thought she was just stunning and she yeah her ratios are crazy so yeah. you know everyone um was was in awe by this look so and i give you credit too because the year she won or maybe it was the year before she wasn't on the scene yet i think it was the year before 2000 maybe 2018 you were showing me pictures of her yeah and she hasn't even competed in the u.s yet and you're like there's this little girl in brazil and she's so cute and i love her physique. i was a fan yeah, yeah you were super that was like one of the few girls I you like pointed caught, out to me i caught her you know before anyone else did yeah, you're like one of the few girls, and I was like, I was like, yeah, she's pretty good. I wonder, we'll see, you know. And then, like, yeah, a year later, she wins the Olympia. I was like, good yeah. eye, Ashley, on that one. Definitely. So yeah, I, I like she's super cute, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then 2000, and now I will say, in 2019, we don't have like a back shot of her, right? No, um, Maybe that's not. something you'd have to look up. I yeah, didn't put it in every. No worries. Yeah, so in 2000, that's one of the things that will that changes a lot from like 2019 um, to. Uh, 2020 was the tie-in, you know, um, Issa crazy impressive from the front, good glutes, good fullness from the back, but didn't have the tie-ins, right. Didn't have the crazy deep tie-ins. And then you started seeing that become So everything's kind of like adding up and adding up a little bit. And then all of a sudden something comes out. Issa did the lat. Angelica started a little bit with more shoulders, right. And yeah. you started seeing like all these little things. And now it's like, Okay, now you need lat. Now you need shoulder. Now you need tie-in. <laughs> now you need, you know, Issa's conditioning because Issa had crazy conditioning, right? She was one of the one of the one of the tighter competitors with that crazy tight waistline. Uh -huh. But when she gets tight, she doesn't look grainy or hard. So she is going to look best tight because the muscles show better mm -hmm. without that crazy detail, right? Without that deep groove detail. So for her, it looks really good, and her waistline gets super sucked in. I mean, her waistline is just so crazy, you know. Probably, I mean, I'm going to guess it's in the teens. I don't know for sure, mm -hmm. but 19 is or something like that. So, and then we go on to Janet winning in 2020. I assume that's the type of one. Um, perhaps, and I know we have uh, several different options here. Okay. Oh, there you go. That'll work. So this was our first tall girl that's won. Yeah. Fun fact, most Bikini Olympia winners are 5'5". Five five. Yeah. <laughs> there are a few that are a little shorter. Um, she was the tallest so far, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely, yeah. Definitely yeah, tall. tallest one so far. So we got a tall girl now, and she has those that supermodel look. Her overall presentation, really good. Probably the best poser I've seen. She's really honestly. good. Yeah, really good stage presence. She really, when she comes out, she really does supermodel right look, i always say know? like she could actually be like a model model like yeah you know what I mean? like an actual swimsuit model <laughs> yeah but yeah very beautiful and and nailed this look i think like you know we're starting to see a good good amount of muscle obviously everywhere especially in the glutes and uh you say that she kind of started the tie-in trend yeah as a winner as she was like the first olympia winner where there was like started getting those deep tie-ins, right? You started yeah. getting, seeing some more tie-in, you know, you started seeing little signs of it in previous years, but not like that, you know, not like that. And then, and when it, when it, she came out, I was like, is that going to be too much, you know, but they liked it. And mm -hmm. then it's kind of stuck around and gotten a little bit more, it's even a little bit more etched now than it was that year. But that's when you really see the, the difference, you know? Yeah. So. Definitely, yeah, definitely. But 
muscle the, the muscle belly is again with her and she's not and she's another one so for you petite girl she's kind of got a petite structure although she's tall because when yes. we say petite we don't mean height <laughs> yes yeah bone structure is smaller but really round pretty muscle she came in super full this year this was the year i was like man she really looks like full and, and and dense and she just looks really just different now she but the good thing is for some of you girls out there who want to she still doesn't have crazy lats this was like you know that was the only thing i was like well considering isa was the the uh the winner before she didn't have those crazy lats still um and i think it's you know because of her height to the torso it's a long way to a long way to cover right so um still some shape though still some good decent lats but not like the the isa pop out lats too yeah definitely know? and i think what's cool about her story too is she was competing back in the day with me too and it took her that long to get the the win and she did it because yeah. she was so resilient just like i said she kept going and she had years where she didn't do so well you know and she kept going with it and i like to see that and she finally got it so i was really awesome. happy when she went that was like one of the few times where i was like you know obviously she's not my athlete but i was just like it was almost like a, it's like a, you know, it's the crowning jewel of her story mm -hmm. and everyone's waiting for her to get it. And she's so nice and always so friendly to me. And you're just like, actually like just genuinely happy for mm -hmm. someone to get it. And I was like, almost like a relief. I was yes. like, she did it. Mm -hmm. She finally did it. Like yeah. good for her. Cause she got second place. I think the most right out of, I think she got second the most out of everyone. Um, and it was just like, everyone's been following her for years and it's just like, there was a point where I was like, I just don't think, I just don't know if she's ever going to get it. I yeah. just don't think. And then she's just a tough chick, you know, yeah. she's a tough chick. She never, she never accepted that. Yeah. So you got to give her, got to give her credit for that. That's Definitely. a resilient, a resilient person right there. Absolutely. And yeah. I would say out of all the winners too, I think she came in the leanest so far out of them. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, very good look there. And then we're moving on. JD to, was next. Yes. Now she, um, was the i don't know if i have an actual photo we'll have to insert it but her my goodness she was the fullest uh winner yet so very very full um structure um filled to capacity and very curvy i would say so actually quite quite a different look i would say than than janet but um uh a bit more muscle too but she you know when we say like when we use the word soft and softer, she can pull off a little bit softer look and still look amazing, which is can come across as, as like n something negative, but it's a compliment in bikini. You know, um, she's not super duper shredded here when she won. Um, the, the body fat isn't, um, the, the body fat isn't super low or anything like that. So no, I think like she definitely, started that uh trend because moving on into even the current uh champion same thing not overly uh lean very full um and and carrying a pretty good amount of muscle pretty good amount of muscle i would say so so i keep pulling up pictures but they're all like this year um and she's she looks she's a lot um leaner in this year's olympia than the year uh, she won in 2021. So mm -hmm. trying to find that one. Maybe it's this one. Is that it? I believe so. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, again, we got we got some caps going on. Um, really good shoulder caps and full muscle. That's that's the trend she started. Very full muscle, very curvy, very full. We found it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, exactly. So, and the thing is, she's got good density to her muscle, too. Really round muscle bellies, very full. Conditioning isn't over the top. I was actually, when she won, I was happy with the conditioning because I think that this is an achievable look for a lot of women to get this level of conditioning. And I think it should be hard, but it's not crazy over the top. You know, it's not a crazy over the top look um, in terms of the conditioning. But the muscle, yeah, that's very few people are going to be able to get that much muscle on her. But um, still um, a, a good a good balanced look, not over the top, um, pushes the limits of someone who would, you'd see like on a beach. Cause that's what, but bikini is supposed to be just as bikini is defined to me. It was, you know, think of a girl who is going on a vacation to a beach and she started kind of training for it for about a month and like started getting ready for it type of thing. And you'd see her on the beach being kind of fit, but she was already fit, but she just kind of took her diet seriously for the last month for a beach. I could see, I could see that girl kind of that fitting that scenario. If she was already kind of pretty, really fit and really into it type of thing. Mm -hmm. It's not over the top, like crazy conditioning, you know? Um, so I really liked that overall look. And with her again, another 
uh, another structure, right? Another crazy structure, really wide hips, um, good waistline in ratio to her hips and shoulders, wide shoulder clavicles, right? So I like clavicle width. So, um, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. And then our current winner, Maureen, uh, kind of has a, a similar physique in the sense of that full muscle, um, really based on mu a muscle, right? It's physique based on muscle, not too lean, probably has the same body fat percentage as when Gen 1. Yeah. Um, we see full tie-ins, very, very round shoulders. Those shoulders have really taken off these days. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, nothing on her physique is too much, I would say. Nothing is overly shredded. You know, it's, for any division, it's really a benefit not to um, have a, a body or a body part that carries too much, you know, uh, fat in one area or anything like that. Um, you know, so again, very similar in, in, in conditioning to the previous winner, but looks great. Yeah. And, and wore, a, wore a pink suit, which I got to applaud. That's a risky move for Olympia. Yeah. And she did. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. And so when you're, and this is the thing. So when she won, a lot of people were saying she's too soft and she's too, it's just like every time someone wins, right? Every time someone's like you said, they're always going to say their things. But I'm like, no, if you look at her conditioning versus Jennifer the year prior, pretty much the same conditioning wise. Um, but the problem is, is you run into shows throughout the year. There's 58 winners basically last year of bikini pro shows. There's a lot of variance in conditioning. And, you know, throughout the year, you'll see trends of people getting tighter and winning and people that are, you know, and so that becomes what's set in the people's mind of that's what you need to look like at the Olympia. Like you'll look at like the tightest winner of the year and be like, oh, no, that's what the Olympia should bring. And you're like, no, that's that's their that's the, the Olympia look is the look of the year. That's the standard for this year. And that's what the criteria should be judged to. You're going to get one offs here and there. But um, with. When, with, when you look at the Olympia, like if you're a coach or an athlete, the look you should be achieving is this. And the same thing with, you know, judges. They judge to this criteria. This is the, the, the current look we're judging to. This is the checklist sort of thing for the look. So um, now you're seeing the tie-ins. They're pretty, they're pretty crispy, but they're not etched in full-depth tie-ins, right? There's, mm -hmm. They're there, but they're not fully connected at the bottom. And that's where you see like a full, um, like an etched-in tie-in will be, as, as deep as this like groove here, like on the inside will be all the way as deep on the bottom. That's like a full etched in tie. -in. And it's just a little away from that. It's probably three weeks of dieting away from that four weeks of dieting away from that. Maybe so um, roundness to the hamstrings, fullness to the glutes, great sh hip to waist ratio, awesome shoulder width, clavicle width. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a good look. I mean, it's a really nice full look. So um, I'm happy with this look as an Olympia winner. I think that this is a achievable look. I just, I, the only thing I worry ever is that it goes far past this in other, like other shows. So I love when the judges look at this and like, all right, mm -hmm. this is the standard. This is what I need to judge to. And so, um, yeah, so, but I like this look a lot yeah. for, for a bikini. Yeah. yeah. And she was, I think the shortest Olympia winner then. I, I, if I'm not mistaken. She like five foot. She's, yeah, she seems like it, right? I, the only time I see her, she's backstage in heels, yeah. so I'm not okay. sure. <laughs> Could be wrong. But she was one of the shorter ones, so yeah. Yeah, no, she's cool. definitely one of the shorter ones. I just don't know what... Uh, um Sonia's. I was thinking that too. Sonia's height, yeah. Because that could be the same, so I don't yeah, want yeah. to say it <laughs> but, could be the same. But yeah, what, what I think what's important is that when people are doing bikini is that you really look at these and you look at the winners over the years and you look at how the structure differences have been between all of them. And bikini really is suited for a structure, you know, and it's like you're, or it's not suited for a, I'm sorry, it's not suited for a specific structure. It's open to all structures. And I think that that's really good for any competitor to say, okay, I can achieve this because maybe I'm a taller competitor and I have a longer torso, Janet, right? Maybe I'm a shorter competitor, more compact. Okay. Sonia Maureen, maybe I'm a, I'm a medium, uh, Adam, I'm a medium build. Like I'm never going to be competitive because Ashley's so petite and all these girls are so petite. Courtney's so petite. Okay. Well, Jennifer Dory, right? Or Adam, I'm a, I'm never going to be as muscular or as, 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 um, as dancer and bubbly as Jennifer Dory. Cause I'm so petite. Okay. Courtney, Ashley, right? So it's like, Hey, there's a, there's, there's a way you can sculpt your physique in bikini, right? In bodybuilding, that's just not a thing. It's like, you need, you need to be big. <laughs> you need to be that big. You should have been big in high school. Like you're not going to be just like that. You just need to be a big guy your whole life to be good at bodybuilding. Right. So, um, you're not seeing like, like I was like a hundred and 
you know, I wrestled at 119 pounds. I'm not, those guys don't turn into professional, <laughs> like IFBB super heavyweight bodybuilders. Right. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's the thing, you know, and it's, I like that about bikinis. It gives everyone a vehicle to, to get to that level. You know, you just got to find what works for you. Absolutely. So, so it's been a, a wild ride in bikini, but I think it's, you know, starting to get more and more consistent as the years go on. It does take, it does take some years to get the look what they want, you know? Yeah. So. And you saw that in, um, you saw that in wellness too. It kind of rapidly oh, changed yeah. in wellness, wellness right away. And even, it, uh, classic physique and everything. And, yeah. you know, just look at the winners then or men's physique that wouldn't hang these days either. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy how fast in it changes in some divisions and some are a little longer bikini, I think took the longest to evolve to where it's at because I think wellness was very fast because, but they also had wellness already going on in different countries. So I think that's what happened. It just took like, it was like a three year process where they kind of like really, the condition just went zap, <laughs> like yeah. super tight right away. And then, um, we kind of figured that out fast, but it was already kind of preset. And then the people who were already good doing it overseas started doing it in U S and then it became like, okay, that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, this one, I would say took the longest to fully kind of evolve and go through its ups and downs and see what's too much, what's not too much, that type of thing. And then, um, and then, you know, men's physique would kind of be right under that at the, as the next one, you know? So, so yeah, that was fun. It's been a fun ride though. It's been, uh, yeah. it's been quite the journey of evolution of seeing this thing. And especially like just the, the reach these days too. Now it's really fun. You know, when I was a young guy, you know, competing, there was nothing, there was none of this stuff, you know, like there was no social media. There was none of these things. So now it's like, oh, I can go see Ashley once a month, right? Like she's right there at the prep center. She's the number one American bikini competitor, number one competitor of, uh, of all time in bikini. Well, really an IFBB. And I could see her once a month. Like to see, to get that access back then was impossible. Like you'd lucky, you'd like go to these gyms and hope to see someone working out and you wouldn't bother them, of course. But posing sessions with them, you're like that didn't happen, you know? So it was like, you know, and that was, I worked out there, you know, <laughs> like you still wouldn't get those things. So it's just cool now being an athlete, like being able to see these things. Cause the only access you had before was you'd go to a show and you'd see them guest pose or you'd get the, you'd like wait for the newest magazine to come in. Like I'd always be so excited for my mailbox. I'd be like, Oh, flex magazine come in today, mom. She's like, no, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> you know, it was like, it was like I ordered all of them. I'd be waiting for it. I'd just be for two days. I'd be gone when the new flex Aww. magazine came out. <laughs> This is how I get big like Ronnie. Oh, goodness. <laughs> His new Flex Magazine workout. That's what I was doing wrong. <laughs> it wasn't that my genetics that were just too small. <laughs> so anyway, any last any last words on this one, Ashley? Um, yeah, 2023. Let's see what they go with here. Let's see what they go with. <laughs> let's see. You know what? Let's It'll do be interesting. A, let's do a, maybe, maybe we'll be, we probably won't, but maybe we'll be really lucky and remember this podcast 10 years from now, I feel like we're still going to be going. Um, let's, let's give a prediction of what we think it'll look like in 10 years right now. And then look back on this maybe in 10 years from now, I'm going to be still doing this. I'm not retiring ever. So <laughs> I'm going to be podcasting. I'm going to be at the prep center. I'm redoing my house right now so I can live closer. I'm not going anywhere. I love Vegas. Okay. So, all right. 10 years from now, mm. how much, okay. I'm going to go percentage wise, more muscle and, and, uh, I'm going to say it's hard to yeah, give a prediction when you don't years, have a reference 10 years, like a person, just, you know what I'm saying? Like this person's going to win. It's yeah. It's, will, hard. it's too. Will it get, do you think, will it get as muscular as figure is now in 10 years? No, but I do think it will get a little more muscular. Yeah. Cause it doesn't seem to be going the opposite way anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, I'm going to say full etched in tie-ins, everyone. Oh yeah. Full etched in tines. I'm actually going to say at a certain point, they're going to go with hamstring separation too. At a certain point, they're going to go for it and just say like detailed hamstrings hmm. in 10 years because it's just, it's not going softer and there's, if it's only going oh, harder. Oh no, then, it's yeah. going softer. Well, Maureen is softer. Jennifer was soft. Yeah. But then in comparison to the, in if you, Je Janet, it's gotten softer. What I'm going to think is how it's going to go is because it's gotten so much harder since the last 10 years, right? Cause it's gotten harder than 10 years though. You mean difficult harder no no like conditioning wise it's harder okay. than 10 years ago yeah and you're seeing girls win who have that detail here and there of the hamstring separation maybe five shows a year you're seeing like hamstring separation a girl will win and then that'll start climbing up i think 10 years from now and then you're going to start seeing that. i hope it doesn't because it's going to be really hard for a lot of girls to get that but i'm going to go with that 10 years from now 
a winner of the Olympia, etched in tie-ins, hamstring separation, and uh, but the muscle won't be maybe like 5% more. I don't think the muscle will go too crazy. I think it will just be conditioning. Mm. So we'll see. That's what I'm going to guess for 10 years. Okay. I hope not. I want them to stay right here. <laughs> <laughs> I like to stay here because the access is there, right? Because yeah. the access is there. So let's see. Let's see if we're right 10 years from now. What do you, what do you, do you think? Am I wrong? Um, I maybe don't know. It's hard. Tie-ins? It's too, um, there's no reference point. So if I can't even, it's kind of just throwing it in the air. I have no idea. I hope it actually, if it, if for my selfish reasons, I hope it gets leaner and smaller because that would benefit me because I can <laughs> I can get lean. Yeah. But I'm, I'm small, so. <laughs> um, that's how I would prefer, so that's wishful thinking. <laughs> well, what if what if they even go, what if they go like, because they have it overseas in some organizations where they have oh, the, bikini yeah. athletic or bikini, they call it bikini, gosh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I think it's bikini fit in bikini beach or something. Bikini fit bikini model i think it's bikini something like that it's like bikini fit or bikini model oh, what if okay. that that might be the evolution that might actually be maybe the ev- i yeah i could see that happening like breaking off another division because they they're very generous with women's divisions we get a lot so <laughs> guys it's like i could see that you have bodybuilding in board shorts you have bodybuilding in bigger trunks and bodybuilding in sparkly trunks. <laughs> that's, that's there the you go <laughs> yeah you know what i sort of, you know i'm gonna make that prediction instead yes that's smart. bikini beach that's what i'm gonna go with but then bikini fit will be etched in tie-ins with hamstring detail oh that makes sense that's where i'm gonna go but mm-hmm. i think bikini beach and i think that there'll be because business-wise it makes sense to just keep a bikini beach division because it's the access to the volume is there right supply and demand when you make it so hard the de- the supply is very minimal and therefore the demand is very minimal it's very weird that you can control both supply and demand in an industry, right? So mm-hmm. you can do it by the division that you create. So I do, that's what I think that will be smart, the smartest thing. I think that's we. the, yeah, okay. that's 10 years from now. Okay, Bikini I agree. Beach, Bikini Beach and Bikini Fit. And or, bikini. or some sort of name of it. But yeah, yes, yeah. broken off into a softer, smaller, harder, more right. muscular. We're yeah. going to revisit this in 10 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching. That was a fun one. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later.